you want to take your work to the next level, the following are my recommendations that once you have, you may not be able to live without. The longer you make collage art, the more scrap paper you're going to have. And what I used to do was store it all in Tupperware containers. And when I would need a piece, I would rifle through the Tupperware containers looking for scraps. This system, which I love, because I generally tend to work according to color palettes. So what I found are these lovely accordion folders. So all of my reds and pinks will go in one um, in one section. Then the yellows and oranges, and I have them, you know, according to the rainbow, all my little pieces. And before cutting a full piece of paper, I will always look in my scrap container first, rather than cut a full piece of paper just because I like to try to use up all my papers oh, eventually. And then here is for the larger pieces of paper. Same idea, a section for each color. I have a section for the shiny colors and for pieces that I have started, but for whatever reason, it didn't work out and I didn't need them. So I keep all of them. You will be making scraps and these are fantastic if you work according to colors. Some people like having them all jumbled together, but I prefer having them sorted. I like to be organized. Now that you have all of these supplies, how are you going to be storing them? I like to have everything in its place. Cutting tools live in one box. My glues live in another box. I have boxes for my papers. And then I have smaller boxes for little things and tweezers and the little things that I tend that are easily lost. These are from the dollar store. Um, they come with this nice little bamboo top. I have this storage container, which is, it says 12 inch by 12 inch, but scrapbook paper comes in 12 inch packets. So this is probably uh, more like 14 by, it stores a 12 inch by 12 inch scrapbook. And you have to be careful because they do have actual 12 inch containers, but they are too small for the scrapbook pads. So measure it while you're in the store. That's storage. If you're not lucky enough to have your own art room, you are going to want to cover that table with some kind of protection. And this can be as simple as a garbage bag, as cutting open a paper bag. You can use a plastic tablecloth from the dollar store. This is just shelf liner. It has one side that's sort of pebbly and the other side is smooth. I've often used this to cover my surface and this works really well. Or you can use butcher's paper that has a poly coating on one side. When you're using glue, you want something that you can easily wash off and something that you can peel the glue off if you have to. But yes, definitely don't ruin your table. When you are finished your artwork, where are you going to put it? If you've made a collage that it glues right onto a canvas and you've varnished it, or if you've put your finished artwork in a frame under glass, you can go ahead and hang it up and you're done. But you will probably find that you are going to have several unfinished pieces or finished pieces that you haven't been able to get framed yet or you're not ready to put them on a wall or glue them down to a board. You need to store them somewhere out of the sun. So either in a drawer, um, stack them up in a drawer, or what I have found that I really like are these plastic portfolios. I got this at the dollar store. And these have clear pockets in them. And into each one, I slip a piece of printer into each page. And then I can store my finished artworks that have not been framed right on 
to these. They're protected if I want to show them. For these smaller ones, I put a little bit of this sticky tack that's in the um, office supply section so they don't all slide to the bottom. So this is just a way of keeping your art, your finished art organized. You can buy portfolios like this from art supply stores, professional portfolios. They're usually black and they come in all kinds of sizes. What's also nice about this is so when you make a lot of work and you have a lot of work that is not finished, you kind of tend to lose track of it unless you have a system. So this is a fun way. As you're storing, you can see, oh, I remember that one. It's time for me to uh, work on that next time. So these are really great to have. Again, make sure you store your artwork out of direct direct sunlight, very important for unfinished, unsealed paper. Sketchbooks, the artist's humble companion. Every time I buy a new sketchbook, I say, this is the one I'm going to finish. And I have never in my life finished a sketchbook. I do use them for doodling and I have found they're really helpful for practicing mark making practicing different lines, different shapes that you're gonna incorporate into your art. I developed my current art style through sketchbook drawings, so they have been useful. Something I don't like about sketchbooks is, especially when you put a lot of time into a page and you finish it and you think, oh, I would have loved to hang that on the wall, but. I have another sketch on the page behind it and I don't want to rip it out. So here's some examples of uh, some collage sketches I have done. Some of them I really like and I would have hung on the wall, but they have sketches, they have other collages behind them. But they're a nice place to practice and you know, you can look at this and say, oh, I'm gonna make another one on a canvas. For me, the problem is I never do. I only do things once. <laughs> So it lives in a sketchbook. You might want to consider investing in a sketchbook if you want to work out some ideas and maybe you will actually finish one if you're much more determined than me. Mixed media is using any medium you want to create art. Acrylic paints, watercolor paints, gouache, markers, pencil crayons. Any art supply that you can find in an art supply store and they're really fun to experiment with and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can get away with using the student grade supplies, especially at the beginning. That's what's so fun about this art style. You can be a complete beginner, so really just have fun and experiment. I have linked most of these supplies that I've talked about today in the description below. So check that out if you're looking for something and have fun creating. See you next time. Bye.